Okay, we're going to uh, flip the decks up now. And uh, Barry, if you'll go ahead and flip that deck up. And uh, I'm going to get one of my other helpers to flip the deck up over here. Okay, we've got the uh, mower decks flipped up on both of our units. And uh, we're going to take a look underneath at the uh, navigator deck for starters. One of the big differences on the um, the Xmark deck is our flow control baffles that we have down here, which is here and here. And what these do is control how much grass we're actually picking up. And right now, in the position that they're in, uh, we're picking up everything that we cut. And uh, what's the significance there? Well, uh, when you're mowing, um, depending on how wet or dry things are, you may not want to pick up as much material. So our baffles will actually pivot in and uh, there's an extra bolt hole here which you may or may not be able to see with the, with the filming, but these baffles will actually pivot in at about a 45 degree angle. Um, that's what we call walker mode when they're pivoted in because that is the position that uh, typically a uh, walker will pick up as far as how much grass they're able to uh, pick up. When they're in their fully open mode, then we're actually picking up everything as compared to about uh, maybe 60% of what we mow over. So you've got a deck that is adjustable depending on your conditions. Another difference with the Xmark deck is if we want to mulch with this deck, uh, we simply buy a uh, relatively inexpensive mulching attachment for it. Uh, as compared to other brands um, where you're going to actually have to buy a complete separate mower deck if you want to be able to mulch. Um, which, you know, in some cases that's going to cost you $1,500 to get a separate deck. Some of the other differences while the decks are flipped up, I'll point out, notice the diameter of our bearing area here and our pivot pin for our front wheels. Significantly larger as compared to over here. Another difference are flat caps on the top. Now, I know the, the newer walkers do have a grease cap on the top. Um, it's a, um, a tall profile as compared to our low profile here. And then another thing I'll point out is look at the massive steel stock that's used on the yokes for these front wheels. Just gigantic material that uh, any, anybody that, again, that, that can find a way to bend these navigator yokes, uh, the rest of the machine is going to look pretty bad too because they probably had to have, uh, let it fall off the truck at 80 mile an hour when they're going down the turnpike, which can happen. Okay, another area that I'm going to point out, let's take a look at our rear gauge wheels on the X-Mark. Width-wise, we're 2 inches and diameter-wise, it's 4 inches. They're supported on both sides by steel brackets. And let's jump over here, take a look at this. We've got about a three quarter inch wide plastic wheel supported just on one side. And what we've seen happen with these is uh, when you're mowing in some rougher areas, those wheels, uh, they're kind of vulnerable. They'll either uh, bend the bracket or uh, uh, break the wheel themselves because of the thinness of them. Okay, so um, we're going to drop the decks down now and uh, move on to some other parts of the uh, machine. So if I can get my uh, lower down. Okay, now we've uh, flipped our seats forward, dumped our bags open so that we can get into the, the insides of these machines. And I'm going to direct you down to our pumps on the navigator. We have two separate uh, gear reduction pumps and wheel motors. And uh, this is a modern design that um, has been on the market for probably the last uh, oh, five to six years. It is a uh, extremely durable transmission, hydrostatic transmission setup and uh, very few moving parts on it. Now what we're going to do is take a look at 
the design that the, the walker uses. You notice here we have uh, finned hydrostatic pumps uh, that are cooled by fans and then if we come over here you'll see gear reduction boxes that they use. So your pump is basically coupled to your um, housing there. Um, it's a, a good design, it works, um, it's pretty archaic, uh, that type of transmission uh, came out on the market in 1968. Now, of course, Walker has not been out that long, but uh, the, the technology that exists uh, you know, in, in this particular century, uh, much more durable, longer life, and uh, less maintenance. So over the life of a machine, you're not gonna be spending the time and effort to uh, maintain and rebuild the hydraulics on this system like you will on, uh, on the yellow unit there. Okay, some of the other areas that we're gonna take a look at while we're down here. Notice the diameter of our air filtration system. Um, the, uh, the cartridge in here is a five inch diameter setup and if you zoom in on the, uh, the air filter set up on the walker, similar design, although it's a four inch diameter. And uh, that one inch extra diameter uh, makes a significant difference in how big our air filter is and how long it's gonna last between cleanings. Some other differences you'll notice here is our engine is mounted with the crankshaft going front to back as compared to the walker, when, uh, when we zoom in on that, you'll see that it's actually mounted sideways, or side saddle. <coughs> with the uh, navigator design, <coughs> with the engine mounted in this fashion, we're actually able to use one less right angle gearbox than what you'll find on the yellow machine. So we've got one less gearbox, which also <coughs> uh, requires one less belt. So we're running a total of three belts on the Navigator as compared to four belts on the Walker. Uh, one gearbox as compared to two. So again, um, over the life of the machine, uh, less maintenance, uh, less moving parts to be 